indigent health care in Fulton County. What's going on? Joining me in the conversation today is William Ali Ligon, who is the legislative officer for the Fulton County Office of Intergovernmental Affairs. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Ligon. Thank you, Commissioner Daniel. I'm pleased to be here. Very pleased to have you with us. We have very important business to discuss with you today. Indigent health care in Fulton County which, as you know, is one of the major commitments that this government has made with respect to the delivery of services to our citizens. Before we get into indigent health care and specifically how we have to rely upon partners to help us in this area, specifically today, the state of Georgia, now, why don't you give us a, a little information about your office, the Office of Intergovernmental Affairs, because it certainly involves much, much more than the area that we will be discussing today. Uh, yes, Commissioner Darnell. Uh, our office is a division of the county manager's office, and we are charged with the governmental affairs of Fulton County. Uh, that includes uh, our relationships with other governments, uh, state and federal and local. It includes lobbying. Uh, it also includes grants procurement uh, work. And those are the, pre, uh, the three main parts uh, of what we do, the three main components of what we do. Would it be an overstatement to say that with respect to the relationships that the government must develop and maintain in order to meet our responsibility to citizens that involve other governments, your office, and the work of your office focuses on those relationships. That is correct. And that includes the federal, state, and local, which would be, what, other counties? Other counties and municipalities. And municipalities. Uh, of course, we have 14 municipalities in Fulton County. We do. But our, our work and our need to develop ties and relationships go beyond Fulton County. Yes, indeed it does. Yes. Indeed it does. We also work with government associations. Uh, Very good point. Yes, NACO at the federal level and uh, ACCG. What does NACO stand for? Uh, the National Association of Counties. Yes. And then we have the Association of uh, County Commissioners of Georgia, ACCG which is a statewide organization that looks out for the interest of counties in the states of Georgia, in the state of Georgia, and we work with them as well. Well, certainly this staff work is extremely important to us because as I indicated earlier, the business of government today is intergovernmental. It is. Yes. With it our is. partnerships uh, with private agencies, non-profit agencies, and of course other governments uh, we cannot achieve our objectives. We want to talk today about our partnership with the state of Georgia because with respect to health and social services, without that partnership, uh, our most modest goals could not be reached. And we want to talk specifically about indigent health care because this is an area where we are facing enormous challenges. Our legislative program reflects and has reflected that situation, doesn't it? It does. That is a high priority uh, in our legislative program. and uh, It's been a priority for some time, right? Yes, for a number of years, yes. and but it continues to be. For this session coming up, it's one of the priorities. It, it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Well, tell us, what is, what is it that we... Well, we're, we're looking at the... Looking for. Looking for. Yes. Uh, we're, we are looking for the enhancement uh, of health care services, uh, certainly to, to the least among us. A and those services, to a large extent in Fulton County, are provided by Grady Hospital. 
And so as we look... That's what we call our safety net hospital. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. And as we look forward to 2013, uh, we've worked with them in identifying uh, uh, needs uh, of theirs. Uh, And we have incorporated that into our legislative program. And that includes um, a variety of concerns, all of which form some part of indigent health care. Uh, there's a specific indigent health care trust fund, uh, but that's about $407 million. And that's really a small part of the overall picture when you're looking at Medicaid uh, for the aged, Medicaid for the poor. Uh, you're looking at the provider fee. Uh, we'll talk more about that, certainly. I know that you want to talk about that. Uh, and also to uh, disproportionate share hospital funding, what we call DISH funding. So that entire a stream of revenue uh, to essentially fund Medicaid uh, for the poor and the disabled is what we're looking at. With respect to the support which we are soliciting for Fulton County residents, uh, I think it may be helpful for citizens to know the specific areas of support of services provided by the Grady Hospital system that we are targeting for strengthening, as you say, uh, in the next legislative session. Most people, when they think of, many people, when they think of Grady Hospital, they think of trauma, they think of the emergency, uh, high quality emergency services which the hospital provides. We have some specific requests. We've been working pretty hard in that area seeking greater support for that particular service. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Uh, some that is... things that were done recently. What, 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 some action has been taken by the legislature to strengthen greatest trauma services, which great, of course, is the Trauma One uh, Hospital. Uh, But I believe you have advised the board that these steps would require further development by the legislature. uh, That is correct. Uh, We're certainly looking at funding stabilization, that is, uh, avoiding cuts in funding. But some time ago, there was a, uh, I'm going to call it a tax, Mm-hmm. Uh, put forth as a way of increasing funding for trauma care yes. uh, that was defeated. And so once again, we're looking for an opportunity to create a funding mechanism uh, for trauma care. Was there a trauma commission created? There is a trauma commission, mm-hmm. yes. And, and that is one of the things they're tasked with. Uh, but it's going to be challenging because uh, there are uh, certainly other priorities as well. Uh, Grady, for instance, uh, has the sickle cell program uh, and the poison let's, let's center. Let's get just let's, let's stick with trauma just a uh, just a little while. Okay. What were the duties of the trauma commission? Were they to basically administer a program that would provide some small level of support to hospitals for trauma care? Uh, that is my understanding, Commissioner Darnell. And the funds to support trauma care, were they to be developed by legislation that would uh, be derived from uh, penalties for highway infractions or? Yes, that was uh, the initial proposal. Tell us about that that legislation and what happened on that. Well, that legislation was proposed uh, and uh, it was viewed as, as a tax, really. Uh, a penalty of sorts, uh, and it didn't get enough traction to be enacted into law. And so we are now looking at some other funding mechanism. So that trauma commission is basically inactive now? I believe that they are still active Mm -hmm. uh, and engaged in this process, Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, uh, looking at, if you will, uh, undergirding uh, trauma care funding. Uh, and this funding will, of course, be statewide, not just for 
Fulton County in the metro Atlanta area. That's correct. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, in our legislative package this year, uh, you have advised us that one of the areas that we are seeking support for uh, is in trauma care funding. That's correct. Is that correct? Yes, L specifically looking at uh, creating another funding mechanism to increase trauma care funding. In other words, more money. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> the funding mechanism it kind of means more money, right? <laughs> yes, it does. All right. Did we indicate specifically where or how we didn't develop any recommendations about how? We usually don't because we feel that legislatures can make the best decisions about how they're going to fund uh, a project. But we have not indicated, have we, uh, any mechanism that might be used we to have support not. trauma care at Grady? No, we have not. As All you say, right. we're leaving that up to Grady and the legislators. You were about to tell us, Mr. Ligon, though, about some other services provided by Grady to the citizens, not only of Fulton County, but this region and this state, where we find it extremely important that we develop relationships. We're going to take a break right now, but when we come back, I want you to talk to us and let the public know uh, that Grady is much more than an emergency room. And without the support for these services, Fulton County residents will be at, put at risk. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back after these messages. Mr. Ligon, you were telling us that while the trauma care division of Grady Hospital is probably the best known, it certainly does not begin to cover all of the vital services uh, which the hospital delivers to the indigent patient. Uh, we are seeking state assistance in providing these services, and I thought we might want to tell the public about what some of these services are also. Uh, certainly, Commissioner. Uh, Grady, of course, provides comprehensive medical services. And particularly when we're talking about Medicaid, uh, income-based Medicaid, and Medicaid for the aged uh, and the disabled, uh, we're talking something around $7 billion a year. And so, that uh, in terms of federal funding. Yes, in, in terms of funding. Yes, uh, because Grady doesn't receive seven days. No, no. I, I just want to kind of make that clear. <laughs> okay, <laughs> in terms of federal funding, yes. but Grady, of course, provides those services. Yes, and um, that is is a critical component uh, of the health safety net yes. uh, in Fulton County, uh, and of course, patients come to Grady from outside of Fulton County as well. And so what we're looking well, at... Well, they come from the region. From the region, that's yes, correct. That's what the record shows, from the region. Yes, uh, and Grady is there to provide service to them. Uh, we are looking at a couple of things on the agenda for 2013 yes. uh, that are most important. Uh, first, the provider fee payments, uh, commonly referred to In as... In terms the, of sources of funding you're talking about now? Yes, exactly. All right. Exactly. Okay. This is commonly called the bed tax. Yes. Uh, and it is scheduled to expire in June of 2013. And this is a tax levied on hospital net patient revenue. All hospitals pay in. And then they receive funds from this uh, fund uh, based on uh, Medicaid patients served. And Grady is a net recipient of funds to the tune of about $10 million a year. And so very important to Grady and very important for those residents of Fulton County uh, who rely on Medicaid that, that, uh, uh, met, that the provider fee be renewed. So that means that one of the major components of our legislative program is to support 
The extension of the bed tax? That's correct, the renewal of the bed tax. Because it is a vital source of revenue for Great Hospital. That's exactly right, Commissioner. Right. Uh, the other thing, of course, we have is what's commonly referred to as Obamacare, uh, the Affordable Care Act. And looking forward, uh, there are some challenges uh, in the state of Georgia uh, and uh, particularly for Grady. The, what are uh, those challenges? Because we had expected that the Affordable Health Care Reform Act would provide some relief uh, for public hospitals uh, who have, of course, you be, know, been swamped with uninsured patients. And come 2014, the Affordable Health Care uh, Reform Act uh, would provide uh, opportunities for the what we call the, the working poor uh, to be able to purchase insurance with the assistance, of course, of the government. But that's not working out that way for public hospitals in this state, is it? Well, not exactly, Commissioner, because in order for it to work, the state has to agree to expand its Medicaid coverage to cover all of these uninsured persons. And at this point, the state of Georgia has not agreed to expand uh, its Medicaid coverage. The problem arises in that the Affordable Care Act is designed to cut payments to hospitals under the disproportionate hospital share formula. Which is a federal program. Which is a federal program. Mm -hmm. uh, the theory is that as Medicaid expands to include the uninsured, there will be they fewer. They can reduce the, the prior funding. Exactly, yes. Commissioner. Uh, what happens, though, is that if a state does not agree to expand Medicaid coverage under the current law, that other funding gets cut anyway. And so the state is left uh, with, uh, or the hospitals are left, with covering this large group of uninsured without the benefit of the continuing disproportionate share funds. Uh, for instance, Grady in 2012 received about $91 million in what we call dish payments. Under the gradual reduction under the Affordable Care Act, that would gradually go down to about $45 million, uh, less than half, uh, over a seven-year period. Meanwhile, the demand remains the same. That's absolutely correct, Commissioner. Yes, because Georgia has one of the largest poverty rates of any uh, state in the nation. Uh, along with our sister of Mississippi and others. Uh, so what happens is that, as you indicated, uh, if Medicaid does not expand, and ICTF and DISH funding, the federal funding programs for the poor, for hospitals that handle a large share of the poor, and incidentally those funds have been flat for a long time, now they're simply declining then that places a public safety net hospital like Grady in a very difficult position. Yes, it does. Yeah. Because ultimately, uh, they will have no choice but to cut services uh, if the funding isn't there. And of course, the impact on the residents of, of Fulton County uh, could well be severe. So it, it is very much They'll in be the, forced to close more clinics. Yes, that could happen. Yes. They'll be uh, forced to uh, increase the number of hours that clients have to wait for services uh, at their major, at their main hospital. All of the, the metrics which they use to uh, measure quality will be affected by the fact that Georgia unlike some of our sister states here in the South, has made the decision, which the Supreme Court gave them the right to do, not to include Medicaid expansion. Is that correct? That's correct. Some people have said that places indigent health care in this county in a critical position. In addition to trauma, there, or tell us, Mr. Ligon, in our remaining time, for those who don't know, some of the other vital services which this hospital provides to Fulton County residents and indeed the residents of this state, uh, which will be affected 
by this financial emergency? Well, certainly preventative health care. Uh, that is the major concern. Uh, as we said, the trauma care. Clinical care as well. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, as you mentioned, they have a comprehensive medical program at Greater, like all hospitals do. That's correct. Uh, they partner with uh, both Emory, uh, the Emory School of Medicine, uh, and the Morehouse School of Medicine. Uh, and uh, those are uh, critical programs uh, for training uh, our medical professionals, our doctors of the future. Uh, those programs uh, certainly would have to be looked at in terms of funding. Um, and that's one of those things you can pay it's me now. It's a teaching hospital. It's a teaching hospital, that's correct. Yes, without students and those universities, there is no grade. Right. It's a teaching hospital, you know, and, and the cost of providing trained uh, uh, students and supervisors uh, I understand is also increasing. Is that correct? As far as I, I know, it is correct. Oh, That's wow. what I've been told. You mentioned the burn program. You didn't mention it, but it's one of the programs that we have a lot of interest in yes. here in Fulton County. The prenatal program, program, sickle cell program, and then of course all of the programs which Greater provides for the treatment and prevention of chronic diseases. That's correct. And of course, I cannot close without mentioning the uh, gerontology program, which is considered one of the best uh, in the state, where specialists who are trained in providing services to older adults uh, are uh, considered one of the critical services which the hospital offers. With respect to uh, services, I wanted to ask, uh, how is Grady dealing with the problem we have in this county with access to quality care? I believe they are seeking to decentralize their services, aren't they, by establishing clinics in the community so that uh, folks won't have to come downtown for to get a prescription filled or to see a primary care physician. Have you all talked, I know you work closely with the lobbyists and with the director of external affairs. Have they talked to you at all about that approach? Because all of us have to seek efficiencies, you know, and this health disparity issue is very sensitive to that, to that uh, hospital as well. Um, so if you'd like to comment on that, Mr. Ligon, I would like for you to do so um, because folks want to know what are you doing to reduce costs? And I think Grady would probably answer one of the things, along with others, is that they are seeking to de decentralize services so that they are accessible to the folks who need them the most. Is that correct? Uh, I've certainly heard uh, their uh, president CEO, uh, Mr. Halpert, speak about that issue. I don't have uh, detailed knowledge of mm -hmm. what they're doing, mm -hmm. but I know it's on their radar screen. Uh, Grady, like other institutions, including Fulton County, is looking to do more with less. I thank you so much for that, Mr. Ligon. It looks like our time goes by so fast, but they've given me a signal. But the last point you made is extremely important because residents need to know that even as we face these enormous challenges in the area of indigent health care, we are seeking to operate these programs in the most cost-effective way, recognizing the importance of both transparency and accountability. Thank you so much for coming in, Mr. Ligon. Thank you so much. And we're going to be working very, very closely uh, with our partners in the legislature to ensure that all the people of this county have access to quality indigent health care. I'll be back in a moment with closing thoughts. Stay with us.
Should people die because they are poor? Should children be denied access to quality health care because they were born in the wrong zip code? For more than 100 years, in their support of Fulton's Safer Than Net Hospital, Fulton residents have answered these questions with a resounding no. And why? Because that's who we are and what we believe as citizens of one nation, indivisible. For the 10th consecutive year, Grady Hospital, Fulton's indigent health care provider, is listed among the top items in the annual general fund budget now under review by the board. However, even before the recession, it was clear that the time has come when two counties, Fulton and DeKalb, and declining federal support can no longer get the job done. Without additional support, from our partners in government at every level, the future of indigent health care for the poor and the near poor in Fulton County is at risk. That's all the time we have for today. So until next time, stay strong. To learn more about today's conversation and how you can help, contact me at 404-612-8222. That's 404-612-8222. You can also email me at emma.darnell at fultoncountyga.gov.